Now, this is important because now we are about to understand a little bit about the religion behind child sacrifice and what they believe. So these men had came to kidnap this beautiful little girl. She was only five years old to kill her, to sacrifice her. And as they were trying to break down the door, they shouted through the window to the mother, just pass us the girl. And you won't get hurt because there was a lot of publicity about the albino man, woman, and child issue where children were, and forgive me for being graphic, but if the mainstream media is going to say that this doesn't exist and that it's conspiracy, children are taken and then people do drink their blood in East Africa. Hey, what's going on, family? Welcome back to the podcast. Listen, I pray all of you guys are having a great week so far. This week, once again, we're going to be digging back into the Sound of Freedom movie. Last week, we talked about it. I gave my reaction to it. I encouraged you guys to go and see it. I thought it was a really great movie. It was put together really well. We offered, uh, actually, we offered free tickets uh, last week for those that wanted to go and see it that had not seen it yet. And we had people reach out and was able to be a blessing to them. So thank God for them uh, that reached out and that we were able to be a blessing to. And we pray that you guys enjoyed the movie. Now, with that being said, the window of us uh, providing those tickets and being able to give those tickets, that window has closed, but I have great news because that was something that we wanted to do out of our own pocket to be a blessing to anybody that wanted to go. But I didn't mention this on the first podcast, on last podcast, that you can actually go to angel.com, which are the creators of Sound of Freedom. Uh, you can go to their website and they actually are providing people with free tickets. Yes, they are doing this themselves as a company. So I will have those links in the description. If you are somebody that are, is not watching on YouTube or on Spotify, once again, the website is angel.com and you can go up there and you can get free tickets in your area. And if you saw the movie, um, which you probably already know, if you sat through the credits, you can also pay it forward. So you can buy tickets for other people um, you know, so that they are able to go and watch the movie themselves. You can do that through their website. But what we did last week was something we wanted to do um, as, you know, an individual ministry, just to be a blessing to those of you that wanted to go and see it. And I'm glad that we were able to do that. So what I saw on their website, and I believe, you know, this is this is a beautiful thing. Their original goal was to sell 2 million tickets because there was a lot of pressing against the movie and we'll get into that. And uh, to date, they have sold 14, almost 14 million tickets and that number is still rising. So praise God for that. They're getting the word out. They're letting people know what's going on in this world, you know, dealing with child trafficking and not only child trafficking, but trafficking as a whole. So shout out to them and the movement that they have uh, started and that is just continually progressing. And that's why we're constantly talking about this. That's why we're talking about this for the second week. And what I wanted to talk about this week was the controversy behind it. Or is there a controversy behind it, right? If you heard anything of this movie, I'm sure you've heard um, that there's some controversial things about the movie or that's going on with the movie, which let me just make it plain is not true because the movie is based on a true story. Uh, there's, there's footage in the movie, uh, of the, of where you see the actual footage that happened in real life. So the things that you're watching on the screen that was shot and that the actors played out, they actually have body cam footage of the different things that happened. And I don't want to give it away. I thought about, you know, giving some spoilers this week and talking a little bit more about the movie. But once again, I'm not going to give away any spoilers. I'm not going to dig into anything for those of you that have not saw it, but know that it is a true story about a man named Tim Ballard. We talked about that last week. And I'm telling you, it has really been a blessing and there is no controversial, uh, 
you know, bone in its body when it comes to this movie. But what we've been hearing is, you know, uh, the the major news outlets, um, certain people are trying to tie them into QAnon. I believe that's how you pronounce it. I don't really know much about them, but they've been trying to tie them into these individuals um, because of some of their beliefs and some of the things they talk about, you know, when it comes to child sacrifice and some of the things that happens, you know, when these children are being sacrificed and being taken. And we talked a little bit about that as well. We talked about how these things, we can go back in in, in the Bible and find out uh, how these things were happening amongst the children of Israel and also other nations. But I guess QAnon, I guess they get into deeper things, you know, the, the drinking of blood and all of these di- different uh, situations. And when they start to talk like that, you know, they start to be labeled conspiracy theorists. So with Sound of Freedom, with Tim Ballard uh, making this movie, they tried to tie that particular movement into this and kind of just discredit the movie as a whole. Now, are there ties there? I don't know. But as far as me watching the movie and seeing it for myself, there was nothing controversial in the movie. And it was all based on true events. And another thing that I saw that I thought was particularly strange, actually, was um, and some of you may have heard about this, where at certain movie theaters, I saw some footage where it seemed like they were trying to discourage moviegoers from seeing this movie. And that was kind of puzzling because it's like, you know, why? you know, as a movie theater, and maybe it was just the employees of the movie theater, maybe it wasn't the owners or whatever have you, why would you discourage the movie theater from making money, no matter what it is that they're playing in there, unless it's just something so graphic and so heinous that it doesn't need to be shown in the movie, which this is not it. Is it heartbreaking and some and some hard things to watch? Absolutely, especially when it comes to the things that are happening to our children. And even with this movie, the reason why I said I felt like it was beautifully done because because it gave you, you know, it, it, it gave you the real on what was happening without getting too graphic and without exposing a whole lot of what, you know, these children go through that are sex traffic, that are sacrificed and all of the other different things that happen to them. But I just thought it was strange that these types of things will be going on at these movie theaters them discouraging moviegoers and so on and so forth. But I wanted to say that there's nothing controversial about this movie, all based on facts. But something that I did want to touch on, and this was something that somebody left in the comments. And normally when people leave stuff in the comments, like if you have been a part of this channel, our YouTube channel, you know that, you know, there's times that you guys comment and I may comment back, you know, thanks for the encouragement or thank you for sharing your testimony. But a lot of times there's people that post things in the comments and they'll say, listen, you need to go watch this. Or they'll try to paste their link into the comment for somebody to go watch something they've done or something somebody else has done. But somebody posted something in the comments and I want to read what it says. And this was in our last week's podcast episode when I did the reaction to this movie. They said, people need to watch this movie. So they said, listen, you absolutely need to go and watch this movie and also need to watch John St. Julian Baba Wanyamas, and I hope I'm saying his name right. The Sound of Freedom, this is what the video that this 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 guy had posted up. The Sound of Freedom, The Truth, The Controversy, and The Deception. So uh, uh, apparently this guy made a video on YouTube and it dealt with the controversy, uh, the truth of the controversy and the deception. The truth, the controversy, and the deception, excuse me. And When I read that, normally I just would kind of read something like that and just kind of let it go. But I said, you know, it was something in my spirit. Say, you know what? Let me go and see if I can find this guy and find this actual video because the person that put this in the comments, they didn't, you know, they didn't post a link there. They just said you need to go and check this out. So shout out to you that that posted that in the in the comments because guess what? I ended up going to check it out and I am glad that I did. Once again, this guy's name is John St. Julian Baba Wanyamas. And I went, Wanyama, excuse me, and I went to check out this video. 
And I'm going to share a link to this video in the description. And in a minute, you'll see why I wanted to talk a little bit about this video that I saw, because it confirmed some of the things that we've been talking about. It confirmed some of the things that people like to call conspiracy theory or act like these things aren't going on. And just and and just for FYI, this is my first time ever hearing about this man. This is my first time ever visiting this channel. So if you do go and watch this video, which I believe it was a good video, it was great information to find out what it is that he does in his ministry and also what he sees that happens to the children that he is helping. Every The rest of his content on this channel, I have no idea what it is about. I did not go through it. So just in case you go and check out this video and start to check out other things he has and you see something you don't like, I don't want anybody to come back to the channel and say, oh, you recommended this guy. No, that is not the case. But I did want to highlight this video. And what I felt he talked about in this video was very powerful. And the things that he is doing in, in the ministry uh, of helping these children, I thought, was very powerful powerful. But once again, and we'll have a link to the, uh, to this video in the description, it is going to be, uh, the sound of freedom, the truth, the controversy and the deception. And just to give you a little bit of background on John St. Julian Baba, uh, Wanyama, um, and this is from what, um, he talked about in the video. Um, he, he works out of East Africa, um, and he works in three different areas, child labor and slavery, he works with special needs children, and he also works with street-involved children. Now, listen to what he says about working with these three individual groups in, in East Africa, these three individual groups of, of children. He says what he has come across dealing with these three areas were witch doctors, child sacrifice, and sexual abuse. And I warn you, and I'm going to I'm going to touch on a little bit of, of some things that he said in this video. But I warn you before you go and see it, because there are some images of the things that he comes across and pictures that were taken video um, that, you know, they can be very hard to watch for some people. So just to give you a warning, if you're going to check out the rest of this video, I am going to highlight some things that he said, because I think it just brings confirmation to what we've been talking about. I told you guys about episode eight. Uh, of our podcast early on when I started the podcast and I talked about how we need to protect our children from these pedophile rings, you know, this child abuse, this child sacrifice and how it was confirmed in the Bible. But listen, one of the first stories that he shared of a, a, of a young child that he dealt with, listen to what he says, said happened to this child. He said the child, this, and this particular child was raped by men. And after a while, it was no longer abuse to him, but it became normal. So this is happening where he is helping these children out in East Africa. So he says, listen, there's this young child being raped by grown men, right? And they're doing it so much to him um, that it has become normal to him. But listen to what he says the child does. He says it, it becomes normal to the point where he, instead of waiting for them, these men, to come look for him, he just went to where they were. And it speaks to what, when, when people are being abused in this way young, it speaks to what it does to their, to their mentality and the effects that it has long term. Another thing that he says that, you know, when he's out, you know, helping these different children get off the streets and bringing them in because, you know, he has a place where, um, They've built to keep these young children safe that are dealing with all of these different issues. But he says he finds children that are being sliced open, you know, to let blood out, you know, and the blood that was being drunk by witch doctors in these areas. So the thing that we're hearing, right, when especially if you live in the United States about the drinking of blood and all these different things, he's confirming that here where he is in East Africa, right, these things are are happening. And this is the type of stuff that we hear in the States where they say, oh, it's conspiracy theory. And I think a lot of times, you know, and, and we talked about this last week on the podcast, and please go and check it out because we touched on so many things, that conspiracy theory does not mean that it's uh, not true, right? It doesn't mean that it's necessarily not true. That's just the title that's put on it. But a lot of times it's looked at in a negative 
um, in a negative way. When you call somebody a conspiracy theorist, a lot of times it's almost like they're kooky or they're nuts, you know, uh, you know, that they're just babbling out of their head. But we really broke all of that down on our last uh, podcast episode. So once again, if you have time, go and check that out. We'll also have a link in the description to uh, to that video. But he says, listen, he's finding these kids with cuts where, you know, the cuts are made for blood to drain out of them or to come out of them so that these witch doctors could drink this blood. I want to share two stories uh, that John shared um, when it came to some of the things that he saw where he is. And I want to warn you that, you know, this stuff is pretty graphic and it's pretty hard to hear. But just to let you you know, in on the mentality of these people that are involved in this stuff and the culture, you know, over there where he is. And I believe, you know, it's not only over there where he is, but also it's all over the world. Right. And I believe reading these stories and even watching that video, it's just confirmation, right? The things that people like to call uh, conspiracy theory, there's no conspiracy there. A lot of these things are happening. Who was involved? I guess that's the million dollar question. Some people believe they know. I can't tell you I know 100% because I will have to be there to say that, right? But we know that these things go on. But listen listen to these two stories that he shared. The first one, and this is dealing with two different... um, you know, sets of children that they have there in East Africa and in his compound. Uh, He goes on to say in in the video, he says, and I'm going to read this verbatim. He says, there's over 200 children, a mixture predominantly they are special needs or disabled children. And we have a lot of street involved boys, boys who were in gangs living on the streets. And we have helped up to now I don't know the exact number, but it's over a thousand children since we started out and we've brought them out of extreme poverty. And a lot of them were in child labor. A lot of them were in that labor situation. And in those three years or those three areas, excuse me, where we worked every time we came across witch doctors, child sacrifice or sexual abuse. So he says, listen, when they were working with getting these young children out of these three different areas, these are the things that they constantly and always ran across, witch doctors, child sacrifice, or sexual sexual abuse in every single one. And so he says, I had no interest in this. I wanted to only help the children, but you quickly see that when you shine light, the shadow pushes back. And so the first thing that happened was that I remember the day very well. Now listen to this. The former social worker called Thomas came to us and said the police have arrived with a little girl who I knew. And I know this girl because we were visiting the family and giving them bus fare so they could take the child for sight for physiotherapy as she has cerebral palsy. Now, this is important because now we are about to understand a little bit about the religion behind child sacrifice and what they believe. So these men had came to kidnap this beautiful little girl. She was only five years old to kill her, to sacrifice her. And as they were trying to break down the door, they shouted through the window to the mother, just pass us the girl and you won't get hurt. And she screamed and screamed and the neighbors rescued her. And when the police came, she said, there's a white guy and he's around somewhere. I don't know where because he's only ever visited us, but was giving us bus fare. Maybe he can help. And this began the story of protecting these children to some degree for the police to come with this little girl and say, can you protect her? This situation, I found out that they target special needs children. And I'm trying to read this verbatim. I'm trying not to add any words to this. He says, this situation, he said, in this situation, I found out that they target special needs children specifically because they believe they are free of sin. Therefore, her suffering, her blood 
It is. It has magic power. Listen to what they believe that because of her suffering, in her suffering, her blood has magic power. And so this was the first event where we realized that we were in this situation, as we already had some special needs children living with us. And he goes on to tell stories about times when where where they have these children uh, living, where there were times where people were surrounding the camp trying to sneak in and take these children, but because of the security measures that they have, they were un able to do it. But listen to something else he goes on to say. He says, now, when it comes to child sacrifice, most people uh, know because there was a lot of publicity about the albino man, woman, and child issue where children were, and forgive me for being graphic, but if the mainstream media is going to say that this doesn't exist and that it's conspiracy, children are taken and then people do drink their blood in East Africa. And just to just to uh uh to just just to touch on what he's saying right here, if you watch the video, he shows actual uh news clippings of where these things were reported by by mainstream media news. So people know about this going on in, in these other countries, but if you notice it's never reported in like the United States, right? But you know that these things are going on. But listen what he goes on to say. He says, and then people do drink their blood in East Africa in these witch doctor religions, but you are not understanding that there are children found that were just playing with their friends. And then they find them on the street with the head missing or their arms missing or their legs missing these albino children. So now he's talking about the albino children. So, you know, he talked about those with special needs. Now he's talking about the albino children and their belief about them. He says these albino children are hunted in the same way special needs children are targeted. And the belief is that they have magic powers. Their body parts have magic powers. And so we have children that are albino in our family. And if you watch this video, unfortunately, you're going to see some graphic images of some of the things that were done to these children. And I believe that they're showing us to let us know, like, listen, this is not a game. This is not make-believe. This is not conspiracy theory, right? But something that he said that was very powerful, and we're going to get ready to close out this podcast. He says, this is not conspiracy. This is something that he said in the video that I thought was so powerful. He says, this is reality. And if it exists there, it has to exist in other humans around the world. And I concur. Why? Think about this scripture. Ecclesiastes chapter one, verses nine through 10. The thing that have been, it is that which shall be. And that which is done is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. Is there anything whereof it may be said, see, this is new? It have been already of old time, which was before us. These things that we see happening that, that John is dealing with in East Africa, this, first of all, it's nothing new. You know, we talked about the uh, uh when in the bible when the children were being sacrificed to moloch slash molech um and just imagine the the heinous things that they were doing to the to to these children and some of them was doing it to their own children but i thought that was so beautifully said by him because he says listen don't think that is just happening here you know, don't let nobody pull wool over your eyes and say, oh, that's just in East Africa. They're just doing that in Africa. They're savages over there. No, this is humankind. This is mankind, right? And in the mind of mankind, you know, it's, it's no different in any, you know, in any area. The circumstances might be different. You know, the locations may look a little different, but man's mentality, especially without the Lord, without Christ, without the Holy Spirit governing it, it can be a super dark Thing. So I felt like that as I watched this video, it brought a lot of confirmation of some of the things that we've talked about, some of the things that we see and hear. And it helps us to understand, like, listen, first of all, it's not nothing new and it's not anything exclusive to one area. Right. And this is why we have to really watch over our children. This is why we have to pray over our children and other children, all children. Right. Because you have people out here with this type of mentality, you know, um, you know, like in the States, a lot of times you hear that 
that these things are going on, not so much uh, because of magical powers. And, and you know what? Matter of fact, let me change that because you do hear stuff like that where they feel like there's a superpower, you know, uh, in their blood um, and by sacrificing them, it, it, it makes you stay healthy. You know, it, it makes you... Um, you know, continue to have power and wealth. And guess what? When we looked up, when we talked about this in the eighth podcast, we, we and we were looking through the scriptures, these were some of the things they believe in. This is why they were passing their children through the fire to Moloch, right? Because these were the things that they believe would happen for them by doing this. So I wanted to let you guys know, like, listen, first and foremost, go and check out that movie if you haven't. Once again, you can go to angel.com for free tickets in your area. Um, it's an easy and simple process, and it gives you an opportunity if you don't have the funds to go and check out the movie. And just to let you guys know, I have a family member that works in this area. I have a friend that has worked in this area. The friend of mine who he was the one that was on the other line um, pretending to be somebody else on the internet, pretending to be a little girl or a little boy and, and, and getting these pedophiles to come in and try to meet with somebody and, and, and just, you know, snatch them up, arrest them. Right. And some of the stories that you hear coming from out of these situations, you would not believe it's insane guys. It's crazy. You know, even my family member, you know, worked in the government and the, the different things that he said that he saw, he, you know, it's just, it's just crazy. Right. And a lot of times it's the people that we don't think is doing it right. These people that are elite, that have money, these people that are sitting on boards and sitting in courtrooms and, and things of that nature. And it's not only them, it's people on, 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 you know, on a, on a regular basis too. It's not only them, but a lot of times the people that are involved are people that we think is not going to be the people that we look up to. And we think that they're just the greatest thing that has ever happened since sliced bread. And a lot of times that's just not the case, but listen, I, I, I talked enough. I just wanted to just come back and let you know, this movie is not controversial. It is based on a true story. They have footage of the actual events that happened, but all of the other things that ties into it, or people are trying to tie into it and that you're talking about, these things are happening and they are real. To what extent, I don't know to who's doing it. I can't confirm that, but it is absolutely happening. But listen, Know that I love you guys. Continue to watch over your children. Pray over your children. Pray for all the children um, because it's just a dark world out here. And we know anything that the Lord loves, you know, Satan really hates it. We know what the Lord said about, you know, um, if anyone hurts this child, that a millstone should be tied around his neck and they should be dropped into the sea, right? So we know how God feels about the children. So being that this is how the Lord feels about children, we know that Satan hates them even the more. But until the next time we hop on the podcast, guys, know that I love you and shalom.